All right, joining me now is Texas Democratic Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, a member of the House Armed Services and Judiciary Committees, along with the Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. Con Congresswoman, thank you so much uh, for your time. First of all, what was your reaction? Do you agree with uh, the Vice President, uh, sorry, the President there and the CDC Director, uh, and especially about when you heard Governor Abbott repeating the mask mandate and has been repealed and fully reopening next week? Well, thank you so much for having me on your program. Very grateful to be with you all. It, it defies logic. The uh, number of daily cases that are being reported in the state of Texas today are higher than they were when the governor instituted the mask mandate in the first place. So we, we have not seen a, a difference in terms of a decrease that uh, when you compare the first, the, the first time that he initiated the mask mandate. We also know that FEMA has designated Texas as being in a red zone. We also know that the last time that he prematurely reopened the state, we saw death, devastation, misery, both on the health front as well as the economic front. Businesses died, people died, uh, families uh, dealt with the, the, the incredible, incredibly awful effects of the pandemic. Um, and so it, it truly does defy logic. The only thing that makes sense is that he is desperate to change the subject desperate for people to stop talking about the disastrous lack of leadership that he showed during and leading up to the horrible crisis that Texas experienced uh, during the winter storm. And so my message to Texans is ignore the governor. He is clearly uninterested in, in protecting human life and truly uninterested in ensuring that we have an economic recovery that is sustainable, wear our masks, um, and make sure that we observe CDC guidelines. And, and I wanted to ask you about something that's interesting because you represent El Paso, whose economy is obviously intertwined with cities and towns across the border in Mexico. You are introducing a bill uh, that would address the COVID-19 response binationally. H how has the international aspect complicated the COVID response? Because we don't talk about that enough here in the United States. We don't talk about it enough. And those of us who live and work on the U.S.-Mexico border, and I would say the same thing is true for those who live and work on the Canadian border, we know how intertwined our economies and our successes and our failures are. There's an old saying that if El Paso sneezes, its sister city, Ciudad Juarez, catches a cold. That's how closely aligned we are. We also know, as we saw through the passage of the USMCA, that um, our economies are deeply intertwined and that we rely on these supply chains. We rely on economic lifelines like those in El Paso for the U.S. economy. And so we've, we've got to think differently, especially in the face of a global pandemic that knows no borders. This will not be the first global uh, pandemic uh, or the last, but we've got to be better prepared. The previous administration, the Trump administration, their policy with regard to the pandemic was to surrender to it. We finally have a president who is interested in crushing the pandemic and bringing our economy and our communities back to life. Well, we've got to plan, and I have full confidence that President Biden will do this, but I want to write it in the law so that it's permanent. We've got to plan for these binational communities, these binational regions, so that we plan together and, and we're able to mitigate the devastating impact of pandemics like this in the future. And let me ask you, if I can, before I let you go about COVID relief and the bill today, the Senate obviously started debating that relief bill. President Biden signed off on a lower income or signed off on lower income limit, limits for uh, stimulus checks uh, in a move to, at least as it's being described, to appeal to moderate Democrats. This, of course, after the minimum wage provision had to be removed from the Senate version. Are you concerned too many concessions are being made on this specific bill? 
I am very concerned. You know, the, the, uh, the president has a difficult task, and that is balancing a whole lot of different interests. What, what I think those of us in Congress need to do, and, and my, my plea to the Senate is for them to please pass the bill that we sent them. We, we saw what has happened in the past. We've seen what has happened in the past when we haven't been bold enough and big enough. We've also seen economic disparities been that they've been laid bare during the COVID crisis. We've seen the rich get richer. We've seen the poor get poorer, and we've seen an erosion to the middle class. Now is not the time to quibble about a hundred dollars here or a hundred dollars there. Let's pass this bill. Let's get support and help to the American people, and let's begin to rebuild our country after four years of of misery under Donald Trump, but after one year of misery uh, of the COVID pandemic. All right, Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, thank you so much for your time and insights. Greatly appreciate it.